Hello, everyone. Welcome back from spring break. I hope you had fun and that you have returned safe and well to school. So we're going to get started for today. As you can see behind me, I have my favorite flower or one of my two favorite flowers behind me because it's by the artist that is the inspiration for our artwork today. So let's get started so that we can begin. And I really do hope you had a very nice break from school and that you got to do some fun things and spend time with people that are important to you. Okay. And here we go. Let me get my screen, my screen a little larger here, and we will get started. Oops. Okay, loading, loading. While the screen is loading, I'll just let you know. Oh, there we go. So, I decided to see how Maggie and Molly would react to Easter baskets. Uh, they didn't go as bonkers as they did for the shamrocks a couple weeks ago. I mean, Maggie was more bothered about trying to tear the basket apart than she was the Easter eggs. I thought they would smack those Easter eggs all over the house, but nah, not so much. They were just kind of sniffing the baskets. I don't know if it was because right before I took these pictures, they were trying to pull all of the cushions off the couch and I set that stuff on there and kind of ruined their, uh, their plan. So maybe they were that kind of dulled their enthusiasm but eh, they just checked it out it was not as entertaining as the shamrocks they didn't tear them up but i did take the pictures with the easter bunny that's that's my easter bunny from when i was a kid he's like probably 33 years old or something i mean i'm older than 33 but yeah they took some pictures with the easter bunny but they were just they weren't quite as enthused as i thought they'd be i thought they'd be bonkers not so much but there is your kitten update. Don't worry, you have, I believe, six more chances to see the kittens this year. So I'm sure there'll be some great photo opportunities between now and then. Okay, so you see this lovely bouquet of daffodils behind me. I love daffodils. I love yellow flowers. They're just so cheery. And we are going to be drawing some flowers today. Now, before we begin, do you, let's look at these lovely, lovely blooms, these beautiful springtime flowers. I see some bright yellow flowers, and they're not all lined up perfectly. They're kind of overlapping each other, meaning one is in front of the other. And they're a little bit larger than maybe you would see in the ground. So maybe they're zoomed in, we're a little bit closer to them than we would if we were to look at them in real life. And I noticed there's this space behind the daffodils around them. Hmm, what could that be called? Well, we're going to review the word space and what it means in art. So space means the illusion, which is like the magic trick of showing depth and distance, how close or far away things are. And we can do that by zooming in or out of our subjects. We can get up real close or we can draw things really tiny and far away. Today, we're going to zoom in. Zoom is one of the words of this year for more, in more ways than one. We're going to add some details to show that we are up close to see all the little details you might see um, if you were under a microscope or you had a magnifying glass rather. You might also to show space overlap some objects, put something behind or in front of the other to show where things are located. Then there's those words positive space and negative space, which we've talked about this year. It's pretty simple positive space the area that is the subject the main thing you're drawing the negative space is everything else the area that's not as important or maybe it's just the solid color maybe it's just the part you don't color in at all so we're going to revisit revisit rather another artist from this year and it's georgia o'keefe she was an american painter and she was known for painting close-ups of nature. And one of the things that she liked to paint were flowers. And she used line color value, meaning that she'd show the lightness and darkness of an object to show all the details. And you can do that today as well as you, if you would like. 
And I really like this quote from George O'Keefe. which She said about why she liked to draw flowers up close. I decided that if I could paint that flower in a huge scale, huge scale means zoom in, you could not ignore its beauty. So here are some of her beautiful flowers. Now, do you see how there's a flower there that overlaps the other one in front of the other? And do you see how she's using many different colors? So she's using value to show the lightness and darkness, the lighter and darker areas of her flowers. I also like how you can see the positive and negative space. So the flowers are the positive space. They're the subject because they're up close, zoomed in. And the negative space is everything in the background that you see, like the green leaves and the blue background here and the mountain in the background the, with the sunflower-like flowers. I'm not quite sure what. They look like a type of sunflower, those. They do, but not quite sure which ones here are some other examples now you can see with that lily how the leaves cut the petals rather overlap a little bit so there's some petals that are behind the other you see those glorious colors you see where maybe the lighter color is where the light is hitting off the um, petals and i love the detail on this flower look at the center you ever think of the center of a flower it's not a solid dot it's like Got a place there for all the pollen for the bees to rest and to get their um get their pollen for the for the butterflies to get their nectar so they can move on to the next flower and help to pollinate them i bet that's a word you've heard in science this year and once again the dark background that you see that is the negative space so Think of all the beautiful flowers that you see blooming right now, getting ready to peep their little buds open. They are quite lovely. They make us think of spring. They might overlap each other a little bit. They might be many colors. They might have some areas of value where they're darker and lighter in certain areas. And I bet if you zoomed in with a magnifying glass or just got up close and personal to those flowers, you would see many details that you never noticed before. Well, today we're going to draw some beautiful blooms for spring. And if you are not a flower person, or if you're thinking to yourself, oh, flowers, I've got to draw, draw flowers today. Well, I'm going to give you some ideas for how you could add some details to your flowers so they're not just flowers if that would help liven this up for you right. another thing to keep in mind is that mother's day is in a couple weeks so maybe if you're not a flower person you could draw some beautiful blooms for someone that you could give on mother's day as a way to say thank you or a way to let them know that you appreciate them. So think of it this way. You can draw this for someone else if this is not your thing to draw or thing to create art for, okay? So I will see you on my iPad and we are going to make some up close flowers in the style of Georgia O'Keeffe. Okay, everyone, you should see my table right now and you should see an example of what we're going to create. I had so much fun drawing these because I love flowers and I love spring. So I enjoy doing several different examples of these so you could see that flowers don't have to be just flowers. All right, so I drew my flowers larger than how they would appear because I'm zooming in to show the details. Like if you had a magnifying glass and we're looking at them up close. So here's an example of one flower that I did. I'll show you how to do this one in just a second, but you can see I have some petals that overlap each other just a tiny bit. I've got some detail for the center, so it's not just a solid dot. And my flowers, let me move this so you can see there's a flower down here in the corner. So you, don't have to, you can draw a giant flower right in the center if you want, or you can have some peeking off the edges. But this is my flowers are my positive space. And then my background is my negative space. So positive space, negative space, the background, the part that is just 
behind the subject to complement it. And like I said, if flowers aren't your thing, just remember you can add things to them like an insect or two. So I put a ladybug or a beetle, whatever you'd like to call that, on this flower. I could have put more, or I can just put one to draw the attention to that one little bug. You could put your own bugs crawling on your flowers if that would make you like drawing flowers better. So if you want to put bugs on your flowers, maybe there's an infestation. That's not what I would do, but if you like that idea, go for it, my friends. So here's one example of what you could do. Here is another example. I will put these on Schoology, these examples, so you can go back and look at them if you want. But again, I chose, I chose some daffodil-like flowers because I love the daffodils with the orange centers and the yellow petals. Love it! So this one I drew some daffodils. And their petals overlap a tiny bit. You can also have flower petals from different flowers overlap each other a tiny bit as well. You can overlap as much or as little as you want. And I also put some petals peeking off the page. So they don't have to all be showing. You can just draw some petals, some flowers. And again, positive space is my flower. The negative space is the blackish bluish color that I couldn't decide what on. And then to spice things up, I added some eyes. So maybe there's something lurking in the daffodils. It could be a kitty. Maybe that's Molly. It could be a creature of some kind. So if you want to just have a random pair of eyes in your artwork to make people wonder, gee, I wonder what that's supposed to be. You are welcome to. You could even just put one giant eye like a cyclops. It could be whatever you wanted it to be, friends. We've got seven weeks of school left. Use your imagination. All right, so here's another example of how you could zip up your flowers. And one more. Now, there's different ways you can do your petals. You can create any flower you want. You can make it as simple or detailed of a flower as you want. So this one might be a little more, ooh, a lot going on here, but it wasn't that complicated to do, actually. So I made my flowers, these are like zinnias that are very loopy, lots of little petals, and they have a nice orange center, and I drew some detail there. I did some called scumbling, which I'll show you in a second for the centers. And then to make it a little more interesting, I put some spider webs connecting my blooms, and I put some spiders on my flowers just to make this a little bit different. Now, I don't know if Georgia O'Keeffe ever added spiders or bugs or staring eyes but you sure can and i sure did so you can make this your own so if you would like to add some spider webs or some spiders on your flowers you can do that too so those are some choices for you you can color your flowers any shade you want you can also mix it up so you don't have to just do one type of flower if you want to have different flowers on yours that's okay I think that whatever you come up with will be pretty fantastic. Okay, so I have a paper here now. I'm at the point, folks, where I am running low on paper and I am using the back of things. If you see something on the back of the sheet, it's because I am trying to use both sheets of the paper, both sides of the sheet of paper to save, <clears throat> excuse me, to save supplies. And you are welcome to do that too. At, if you're at the point where you're down to like maybe notebook paper or notepads you can make art on just about anything friends so i mean I, this part of the school year we're usually like that running out of stuff or supplies are getting low so let me give you some examples of how you could get this started the first thing you can do is start with the center of your flower <clears throat> excuse me i always do this once we start i start doing it clear in my throat my apologies so you start at the center and you don't have to make it very complicated. It does not have to be a perfect circle. And then we want to put our petals. Now we're thinking big, my friends. We're zooming in. So yes, I know that flowers really aren't used this large. And I want you to think of this like for the flower I'm going to show you for the petals. Think of like a compass. So like your cardinal direction. So here's north. Here's south. And I'm going to get a little bit different. I'm going to overlap a little bit here. So I'm going to start my petal here. Here's west. 
And here's east. So you can practice your cardinal and intermediate directions doing this, okay? Whoa, that pedal was a little large. Now, if that happens, because you're talking or not paying attention as you're talking, because you're being kind of silly and talking about a compass while you're drawing flowers, you can always go back. And that's why we shouldn't press very hard. And you can fix things up. Now, you don't have to be a perfectionist about things, but if you ever want to change something that you're working on, that's what erasers are for. Sometimes we say, I meant to do that, and other times we say, nah, I meant to do something else. So I'm going to, there we go. There we go. So I've got my north, east, south, west as we practice our cardinal directions. Then the other pedals that I'm going to add, they're going to, these are going to overlap are going to be my intermediate direction. So I'm going to have a pedal going to the northwest. I'm going to have a pedal going to the northeast. You didn't know we were doing some social studies today, did you? Da, 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 da. I'm going to have one in the southeast. And I'm going to have one in the southwest. Oops. All right, so there's my basic flower that I have drawn and I drew it very big. You can make yours large too and you can do yours. Maybe you want to do the eyes over here or do a spider web. You just want to draw one flower. That is okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. There I go again, clearing my throat. You can also draw your flowers a little bit smaller. And I'll show you how to do that as well. Okay, so um, if you want to show you a couple things here how you can color your flowers for the center i'm going to choose a couple shades of brown here if you just have one or two shades we can make it work but i told you there was something called scumbling it's a way of of coloring to show texture to show detail and it's really not that complicated but to do that all you're going to do is you're going to take your crown or color pencil and you're making these wiggly squiggly lines going back and forth and you don't even have to pick up your crayon or color pencil you can if you wanted to i just picked it up there but you're just gonna fill the space with all of these wiggly squigglies yep and then after you fill it up as much as you want you're gonna take another color take a darker brown and you're gonna fill it up with more wiggly squigglies I like that. Wiggly squiggly. That's a fun word to say. Wiggly squiggly. <laughs> Don't say things that I say to the point where they annoy or aggravate the other people in your household. Okay, that's not very nice. Okay, so I just did two different colors here. All right, so that's how I did scumbling to show some detail for my flower center. Now, to show the, let me show you this one here. To show the detail, like the value, the different, the lighter and darker areas, I'm going to use a couple different colors for that. So I would use for that, I'm going to use a yellow. We talk about needing your supplies being on the last legs. There's my yellow at this point. Might use an orange, and I might use a <laughs> reddish orange, which is even shorter. Yes, friends, it's the time of the year. And I'm going to start you so you have a light, middle, and a dark, okay, to get those details. Might have to use a different orange there, a dark red orange. We'll see. And all I'm going to do to get this started is I'm going to do some lines. I'm going in one direction from the center. I'm drawing some lines. And I'm not going, I'm not going back and forth. I'm just going one direction out. is nothing fancy friends and if you'd like after you do that one do that middle color you can take the darker color and maybe you want to add go ahead and add a couple more of those lines just going out just like that nothing fancy nothing fancy Okay, now I'm only going to color maybe one petal on this one because I want to show you how to do the spider web because someone's going to want to do that. And then <clears throat> for
for my petals, I'm gonna take my lightest color. Stay on track here. Tell myself to stay on. I had to tell myself to stay on track. Don't get ahead of myself. And I'm just gonna go over all of that with the lighter color. And it's gonna blend it in nicely. Now take your time with this. Just because it was simple and you're just going one direction does not mean we need to go speedy fast. Take your time, like the Zen tangles. Let it relax you. Okay, no need to rush. I'm not in a hurry. I got nowhere to go. I'll put it that way. All right, <clears throat> so after the lighter color, then you can go back with that middle color again and go around the edges, and it's really going to start to blend it in. Or it's going to really start to take some, uh, you know, get that cool flower effect. Then you can go in with that darker color and just go around the edges too, very lightly. And da, 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 you have your flower pony. You stitch all of them, and you can just keep going around. Now, I'm gonna go down here in the corner. I'm gonna try to just use one sheet here. And if you wanted to do a flower of peeking in the corner, you can do the sneaky center, where maybe I'm gonna take my pencil and my hand here, and I'm gonna like wiggle. I'm gonna look a wiggly line for a circle. Wiggle, 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 wiggle like that. It doesn't have to be a perfect circle. This one's not a perfect circle. Well, actually. No, it's not perfect. <laughs> not perfect. If I want to draw a like the flower, like the zinnia that had all the little petals, I'm just gonna go around, make these loops, kind of like fish scales. I go all the way around the center. Now, if I was drawing this in the center, like I did this one, I would just go all the way around. But this one, I just did, I did some loops around, and then I'm gonna put a petal in between or so, and I'm gonna put another petal in between there. And you just keep going as big and as large as you want. Like I said, these flowers don't have to be an actual species of flower. They can be a new breed that you create. Alrighty. So don't worry. Now, if you want to look at different flowers online, if you want to, you are welcome to do that. But that's all I did there. Made little loops, kind of like the fish scales we did for the uh, Zentangles. Same thing, my friend, same thing. And then you could color that in as well so let me show you how to do that to look a um spider web yes sorry spider i've lost my train of thought there so actually i will but i'm going to do one more so i'm going to draw another flower right here so maybe this was going to be my um daffodil like flower i probably won't get a chance to color these in but that's okay i really want to show you do that spider web because somebody is going to want to do that I'm going to draw a petal going to the, now some flowers, if you want them to be exact, they only have a certain number of petals. So I'm going to draw a petal on to the side here that's going to be peeking off now. If you draw things, and they may to be behind the other, just erase what you put in front. I'm going to draw another one down to the side like an X. I'm going to draw another one up here. And I'm going to draw my petal peeking off the page. You see, these, I like drawing my petals or my flowers that are peeking off the page because then you, have to, you don't have to draw the whole thing. Works out great. And I'm going to draw another one down here. I actually like how combining the flowers looks. That's really cool. And if you're going to see a little bit of this one, I'm going to draw this petal that's going to peek behind this giant whatever that is. All right. So maybe that's going to be my daffodil or some other flower. Okay. Anyway, with this space right here, if you want to fill your negative spaces with some uh, spider webs, how to do that? Uh, start with connecting one petal to the other. Doesn't have to be fancy. It can be on diagonal. Can be straight up and down. Can be like I said, it can be vertical or horizontal. And then you're gonna crisscross it. And then you're gonna go. You can go vertical. Then, oops, and I made that line a little wiggly. That's okay. You don't need a straight edge unless you want one. Maybe you want to split it down the middle, go across too. Split it across. There you go. All right. So this will work. And then what we're going to do is we're going to make these curved lines, these like smiley lines between the lines we just drew. This is a good thing to keep in mind for Halloween too, or fall. If you don't celebrate Halloween, I understand. I was not a big Halloween person myself back in the day. All right, and then I'm just going to come in and I'm going to do it again. It's very relaxing actually doing the spider webs. 
And depending on how detailed you want your spider web to be, you can just keep going in. Make it a little bit smaller as you go in. And then you can add dear old Charlotte if you want. You just add a circle. And there's probably a more scientific way to draw your spider, but I'm just drawing two circles and oval. And then I'm going to put the legs out of the side there. Okay, so that's how you could do your uh, spider web. If you wanted to do the eyes very quick, let me show you how you can do the eyes now. All right. Okay, I already drew the eyes on here, but that's all right. I'll just go over my um, lines here to do the eyes, but think about how we drew eyes when we did faces, okay? But they don't have to be as exact. They don't have to be people eyes unless you want them to be. I'd start with a hill. Start with a hill, okay? Then connect the hill, or two sides of the hill, with a smile. Connect it with a smile. And then I drew these kind of like kitty cat eyes. Then I would put an oval in the middle. And then you can just darken then the pupil as much as you'd like. And you can have a pair of eyes staring at you through your daffodils or whatever you choose to draw. And you pick the eyes any color you want. They don't they do not have to be realistic like the ones that I drew, even though mine are not realistic. I just drew mine to kind of like kitty cat eyes. But you could do that if you wanted to. To do that, I just did some yellow. Actually, I think I did some yellow green, but I did some yellow around the uh, pupils, maybe a little bit down here on the uh, lower part of the lid or the uh, lower part of the eye. And then I filled it in with a lighter green. And you do not have to do exactly what I do. Just kind of show if you want to have that gleaming eye effect. And I actually think I used a lighter green than this to get that effect. So let me continue over this one. It doesn't take much though. And then you're kind of showing the lightness and darkness, lighter and darker areas of the eyes that where the eyes catch the light. Ooh, and then you have some shiny eyes. I think I used this green. Yeah, I used the green yellow. But like I said, you can do blue eyes, you can do purple eyes, you can do pink eyes, you can do red dragon eyes peeking out of the pretty flowers i don't know make it your own okay be creative nobody's gonna say oh that's not what it's supposed to look like have fun my friends okay so whenever you choose to draw to show how you overlap and use positive and negative space or whatever you do to show detail with your lovely blooms i hope you enjoy it and i hope you have fun with flowers have a great week, my friends. Stay safe, be well, and I will see you next week. Bye-bye.